interesting video for, for you today. We're going to be putting a mesh filter over top of a bunch of different fans and as well as behind it and seeing how it affects the airflow. So how much does a mesh filter affect the performance of your fan? And does it equal no airflow? Let's get into it. So first, a little bit of demonstration for the test. You've got the filter, you got the fan, the airflow tries to go through it. And then the second test is you got the fan, then you have the filter, and the fan tries to force the air through the filter. So the first one is like an old classic PC cases. The filter was literally directly over top of the fan. So it was really hard to make the fan work. So how much performance difference do you actually get? And then a lot of modern cases, you have the, the top mount for the fans. It comes with a filter there in case you want to turn those fans around and have them in a pull configuration. And this test is going to be why you really want to remove that filter because it will affect your performance. So let's get right into the data. So first, we have a couple different fans on this. Sorry, the graphs are not labeled. CFM is the vertical. Decibels are the horizontal. The P28, the NFF12, and the A12X25. The noise levels here are not related to any of my other testing. They're only related to each other because they're all done consistently, and they're all done with the same testing apparatus, so the, all the performance data line up. So what's really interesting is that the F12 uh, performs overall the best, but when you compare it to the other fans, meaning it has higher air speed uh, overall, it is closer to achieving its original performance, but we'll get into that in a little bit. If you're talking about raw performance numbers, well, the P28 is doing pretty well, but it's also very noisy at over 60 decibels, and it's at just over 40 meters cubic feet per minute, while the A12X25 is sitting a little bit under 40 meters per second at about 55 decibels. And you can also see where the noise levels lie. Adding that filter makes it noisier at each of the given uh, RPMs or uh, cubic feet per minute, the air flows that each of the fans are operating at. Moving on, we got the SWA fan uh, pressure, we got the SWA fan reverse, and we got the SWA fan airflow models. What's kind of weird about the uh, reverse one is that the push configuration outperformed no blocking. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I may have made a mistake in my data sets in switching those two, um, but I no longer have access to the fan. Matter of fact, when I got around to processing this data, I no longer had access to the fan. So I am unable to uh, verify that. Uh, I should really remove that but it's still in here. I left it in here because it's finally when I'm got it, getting around to filming this. So I do apologize for that potential mistake. Uh, anyways, you see the performance there. And then we have the A12X2015, a slim fan because I wanted to test one of those. We got the mag flow and its performance data. And we have the CFV12HP, a Cougar fan that was, I, I thought it was pretty cool way back in like 2011, 2012. Still have them kicking around in pretty good condition overall. Okay, at 20% PW fan signal, percent CFM reduction. So this is a fraction. It's how much performance remains, the remaining performance from the original. So it's the, the pull or the push configuration divided by the original value. Red is going to be push, blue is going to be pull, and you can see that there's a very significant drop. Again, we're going to ignore the reverse because don't really know why that's going on there. So we got the airflow, 60%, 50%, 50%, 30% for pull, 45%. So it looks like push on average is doing a little bit better than pull. At 40%, that trend is more or less holding true. There are a couple exceptions in there, and we see the performance values shifting around. By 60%, they look like they're dropping a little bit in relation to the others. So it's sliding back to the right. So you're not getting as high a percentage of that original airflow as RPMs increase. And it looks like that's continuing to hold true. Push is doing a little bit better than, than pull. And at 100%, that trend more or less looks like it's still holding true with the uh, percentages continuing to slide backwards. And we could see the averages. So in a pull configuration, the average at 20%, 40%, 60, 80, and 100%, and the push configuration for 20, 40, 68, 100%. So on average, you're getting better performance in 
forcing the air through that filter than trying to draw the air through the filter. But you're still getting a very significant performance drop. So as pretty much every reviewer tells you that does case reviews, remove that top filter if you're not using it in a pull configuration. Uh, and then the noise performance at 40%, PWM fan signaling, we got the uh, original with no restriction, and then the pull and then the push. So kind of, it's a mixed bag, but I would say it's kind of equivalent because if you're, if you're averaging each and every one of the fans, uh, because some there's a performance, it actually gets quieter, while others gets noisier. So there's not going to be too much, but the pitch, the, the pitch of the noise will change. On average, it'll get a little bit higher in pitch, which will be in um, a different part of the video for what it will sound like. 60% uh, things are kind of looking the same. We got that mixed bag where um, some are quieter, some get noisier. I would say on average, you're starting to see them get noisier with having the filters blocking the path of the airflow. And then at 80%, it's shifted more towards it being noisier. At 100%, very much it getting noisier. Again, you're increasing, making it get higher in pitch, which is more annoying to the human ear. Uh, we find higher pitched noises more annoying than lower pitched noises. Pressure fan, no filter. Pressure fan pulling air through filter. Pressure fan pushing air through filter. Airflow fan, no filter. Suave fan, airflow fan, pulling through filter. Airflow fan, pushing through filter. Reverse fan, no filter. Reverse fan, sucking air through filter. Fan pushing air through filter. MacFlow, no filter. MacFlow, filter behind the fan. Push, through, fan pushes through filter. Magflow fan pulling air through filter. P28 no filter. P28 fan pulling air through filter.
P28 fan pushing air through filter. Cougar, no filter. Cougar filter pull config. Cougar filter push config. F12 no filter. F12 pull. F12 push. A12X25 no filter. A12X25 pull. A12X25 push. A12X15 no filter. A12 X15 pull. A12 X15 push. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, I know it was relatively short, but short and sweet is good. This is the raw data. This raw data does belong to me. It took me actually a little bit of time to adjust the fans, hook them up, and put the filters on. Didn't keep track of the time. It took a while to get to processing the data and making the video. Um, long story short, from what we found with this testing, is pretty much obvious to, uh, if, if you can help it, not have the filter in front of it. And we're gonna have a follow-up video for spacing, how far to have the filter spaced out from uh, the fan itself to optimize performance. So I hope you'll join me for that one. Uh, anyways, if you've got suggestions for more videos for me to take a look at, uh, this one was actually a user suggestion, actually asking about pushing air through a filter. And I just decided to combine it with pulling. So if you got suggestions for videos for me to make, uh, please leave in the comment section below. If you got fans you want me to take a look at, uh, anything else. If you like what I'm doing overall with this channel, uh, please think about joining me on Patreon or as a YouTube member. If you got any ideas on ways I can improve my videos, obviously labeling graphs, it's been a move. Obviously, I didn't get to this one. Apologize for that. Um, anything else? I'm open to constructive criticism. And thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.